this is from January 2022, so it's a couple years old, and um, I'm sure we'll have some outdated references, but I think it's still going to be fun to flip through. So let's get started. So, on our first page, we have a Ritz-Carlton ad. Welcome. side of Los Cabos. So, that ad continues, where the desert meets the sea, and we have these really, you know, modern looking hotel buildings that it's highlighting. Next, we have an ad for a cruise, the Regent Seven Seas Cruises, and this one it's really playing up to the beachiness. It's playing up to a beachy cruise. Next, we have an ad for Hilton Head Island in South Carolina. Take a moment to take it in with this sunset photo. We see a lot of South Carolina advertising in these, don't we? Next, we have an American Express ad see what it says. It says, the last day of vacation should still feel like a vacation. Get guaranteed 4 p.m. checkout at over 1,200 fine hotels and resorts worldwide. Uh, obviously, it has some uh, term supply uh, for Platinum Card members who book with American Express Travel. Kind of a cool ad for a travel magazine. It's time to saying it's time to party again. So this is for MGM Resorts in Vegas. I, I think I like this ad. I think this ad's really creative. And here we have Oceana Cruises. And they're clearly highlighting let's see, we've got an elephant. I'm guessing this is an African cruise. I don't know if it's a river cruise or if it just has safari portion of it, but, you know, taking a different angle than our first cruise ad. Oh, we've reached our contents. So we'll have a letter from the editor, discoveries, experiences, an intelligent traveler's cruise special. So special about cruises and from the cover, the destination of the year, Mexico. And on the side, we Lexus ad. Again, I'm not really a car girl, but you know, the car ads are always interesting. Uh, some more contents. They have some features, including a gift guide. And then it ends with a photo from a reader. So I'm excited to dive in more. Here we have an ad for Dorchester. Jet. And you can fly 
private. I wonder if this still exists. I wonder how it's doing. But, I mean, if you're flying on a private jet with other people, isn't that just a commercial flight? <laughs> if it's reasonably priced and strangers are on the flight with you, that's, that's just any airline. Okay, we have more contributors. Let's see. some recommended items. Let's see what she recommends. So this bag as a travel bag. Red wine, she says. Red wine is a favorite for the festive season. At home, I'll be sipping this elegant super duskin from Bangala. Bangala. She recommends this backpack for carrying travel gear. And she recommends this watch, this Apple accessory, getting a double strap leather. That's cute. Oh, this is a fun ad. Istanbul Airport, the world's second best airport. You don't often see your people touting second best, let alone having a whole ad for it. But you want to be proud, Istanbul. You can be proud of second So the 
this is an Antarctica expedition. I would love, love, love to visit Antarctica, but it is so expensive and also like seems ethically fraught with sustainability <laughs> stuff to do. Um, but it looks like, yeah, this trip is almost $50,000. Sardinia's answer to the nochi. Uh, it's a rigid dumpling. Yum. Yum. That just made me want to cook pasta for dinner. It's fun. And then liquid sunshine. Oh, this is what our, our contributor we spotlighted earlier. This is our piece. And it's got a little cocktail recipe. for 30 distinctive 
resorts in Mexico and the Dominican Republic. I have been to a resort in the Dominican Republic. It was not any of these, but I did really enjoy it there. Okay, back to our discoveries. Up and away, a thrilling new adventure takes place high above the snowy plains in Swedish Laplands. Taking a hot air balloon adventure in Sweden treasures from 10,000 feet. With a record number of planes being retired, a new trend is taking off. Aviation upcycling. So it looks like this is an engine cowl they've turned into a seat. And it looks like this is like a window panel in a table. Kind of cool. I feel like it'd be weird in a normal house, but it would be really cool in like a installment installation on the grounds of a chic new hotel. So this is about a new art installation in a Uruguay hotel. I've heard really good things about Uruguay for travelers. But okay. Here we have an ad for Sea Island. But where is Sea Island? it say? <laughs> Where is the island? Is this in the U.S.? Is this out of the U.S.? Is this an island? Where is the island? Not a very good ad because I need to know where it is. Okay, we've made it to experiences. The winter of our content. Or is it the winter of our content? <laughs> Hard to say. Though it started out as a magnet for tycoons and celebrities, Sun Valley has managed to retain a comfortable down-to-earth quality few other ski resorts can match. Oh, so this is the piece from the other contributor we read about. About Sun Valley, Idaho. And I've heard really good things about Sun Valley, but in particular I have heard that visiting Sun Valley in the shoulder season so right before skiing and right after skiing is really fun because like the restaurants and all the nice things are still open but the prices are a lot cheaper and it can be a fun weekend so let's see we've got a little map of where sun valley is so it's in idaho we've got wyoming montana idaho we have boise and sun valley well I, boise is farther west than i expected Sun Valley is like right in the center. Oh wow, this is kind of a long, this is a long article about Sun Valley, I know. Just keeps going. I, I've heard it's quite expensive to go there during ski season, but I think it would be really fun. Okay, next experience. Setting out for the wilds of Utah, reluctant camper Candace Rainey discovers sleeping in a big yellow tent isn't as bad as she feared. So we have a camping, a camping trip explained by this author. Let's see. We built a fire and did nothing. I get why people like that part of camping, especially if they have a flask of good whiskey and don't have to drive anywhere. I do love camping. Okay, winter's trail. Snowshoeing is having a moment, enticing urbanites to ditch city life, at least for a weekend, to revel in the great outdoors. Paul Brady heads to the Catskill Mountains to drive for himself. Snowshoeing. I, I like snowshoeing, so this is where he went to New York. recommend if you've never been snowshoeing. I think it's really cool. But, 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 I really prefer cross-country skiing to snowshoeing. Snowshoeing, you're like clump, 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 clump up the mountain, and I get so tired. And cross-country skiing, you're kind of like gliding, you're like swish, 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 and you 
also get so tired, but it's different. The skiing is kind of like low impact and you're going kind of faster. So I recommend it. Although you can get more places snowshoeing than cross country skiing. Okay, here we have an ad for visiting Canada. Snow dogs, a rider's journey to the Alaskan wilderness for an immersive lesson in mushing, finds the sport to be the ultimate cold water test. When I think of like mushing and the snow dog races, I think of that um, knockoff Disney movie, Bolto. I loved the movie Bolto when I was a little kid. <laughs> and waterfalls in the Rocky Mountains seemed like an impossible feat, but Jen Murphy found that with the right teacher, even a novice can make it to the top. So here they're ice climbing. I have some friends who do ice climbing, and it seems terrible to me. <laughs> it seems really hard, and really intense, and really cold, and really scary, and all the things all the things I wouldn't be interested in, but they love it. So clearly there's an appeal. Clearly there's an appeal to the ice climbing. Okay, we have another cruise ad. This one, highlighting cruises in Norway, it looks like. Okay, intelligent traveler. New wave as cruises come back big this year. Travel and leisure correspondents set forth to document what has changed and what has remained as blissful as ever. So I think we're going to get uh, some highlights of some different cruise lines and cruises. Let's see. Many happy returns on a sailing around the Baltic Sea. Nina Kaplan reveals, or not reveals, revels in historical and familiar concepts. This is a cruise in the Baltic Sea, which is not really a place I think of for cruises, but... Oh, cool. We have a little map of where they went. So the cruise started in Denmark, and it ended in Stockholm. This, this seems like a really cool itinerary. You go to Denmark, Germany, Estonia, Finland. Get a lot of countries in there. Okay, going with the flow. Aboard a small ship known for its low key vibe, David Swanson learns that these days, cruising is all about embracing spontaneity. This is a smaller cruise line. Looks like it's a Norwegian cruise. discovered that there's no such thing as a dream trip. So she must have had some problems. Oh, it looks like she caught a positive COVID test. That definitely um, throws you back to 2022. But this was an Oceana cruise around Iceland. himself on the flavors of the Mediterranean, both land and sea. So he was on a cruise that was all about food. That does seem fun. There's definitely something to that. <laughs> and that was from Silver Sea. It's the type of cruise. Wild blue yonder. After cruise lines were forced to this year, they brought visitors to a host of lesser-known destinations. 
Sarah went aboard one such sailing and discovered another side of the Bahamas. So a cruise that went to some of the lesser known ports in the Bahamas. Very tropical. And it was on princess cruises. favorite thing to do in Mexico City is to head downtown and you walk by used bookstores on Calle Dul Dulceles, the historic bookseller alley. There are more than a dozen. Some have been there for decades. Afterwards, it's just a question of finding a coffee shop and sitting down to read your recent purchases while sipping a coffee with milk. So our recommendation is bookstores and coffee shops in Mexico City. Just outside San Miguel de Andes, our author finds a dynamic winemaker's reviving centuries old tradition. Finds a crew of dynamic winemakers reviving centuries old tradition. So, some wineries. And look at this, this is a beautiful looking winery. Wow. Okay. Shabanda, Shabata. For years, we've been discovering the greater Baja Peninsula. As an incredible culinary journey starts with taco tour of Todos Santos, including stops at Barracuda Cantina, Santos Chilote, and Tiki Santos. Then make your way north to Magdalen Bay, where you will find the best seafood in Baja. Then to Concepcion Bay, where you should take the El Burro Baja tour and go diving for fresh clams. So that's their recommendation. So scenic. Beautiful. Okay. Guadalajara. Creative spirits on a weekend jaunt. Adam Rice encounters vibrant food and design scenes, propelled by an ambitious new guard putting modern spins on regional staples. So we've got a lot of food featured here already, and a little map of the restaurants he visited. go through my eyes this time. Enrico Oliveira, the founder and co-owner of a restaurant. A vibrant destination with endless things to discover. It's one of my favorite cities in the world. It's a one-hour flight from Mexico City in my hometown. There's a beautiful small shop where you can buy blown glass objects.
Fonda Margarita offers delicious casual breakfasts. And after a day exploring the city, stop by my bar, Chikudis, for a cocktail. So that's his recommendation. Tlaxcala, which is, looks like they have a little map of a road trip from Mexico City. A little four day road trip. The route less traveled on a drive through to Mexico's diminutive central state. most responsible tourism destination. Let's just look at some new sustainable resorts. Okay, and we're to the gift guide. The gift guide. Let's see what we've got. A Polaroid. I do think a Polaroid camera is a really good gift for like almost anyone. Suitcase, headphones.